recipe, as I like to call it. I'm gonna go ahead and do an apple, apple sauce, but it's not apple sauce. Um, every year, just the reason why I have so much of these every year, around this time, my stepdad's friend, his trees start fruiting, and he has a bunch of pear and um, quince fruits which is I mean I haven't even cleaned them yet I just put them here so um, this is what they look like these are quince and then of course you know a pear looks like so I gotta clean all these off take all the stems core them now if you don't have a core this was so hard to find when I first tried to get it I went to Walmart I went to Target I went to Kmart and then I still could not find it I went to like the dollar stores I couldn't find one Finally, I went to Bed Bath and & Beyond and they had it. It was like eight bucks, you know, not exactly cheap, but if you plan to use a lot of apple type fruits this fall, it actually comes in handy because you, you gotta be able to do this or else it's, it's just a pain in the butt trying to core everything and this does it really quick. So I'll show you how to use a core. Also for this recipe, you're gonna need some water cinnamon, cl ground cloves, ground ginger, or um, if you have like pumpkin spice or allspice, you could use that in case you don't have these. But cinnamon is a must, and some granulated sugar, and then a big old Dutch oven. I'm gonna make a huge batch of this. Um, oh yeah, and a blender, because you will need to blend it at some point. So let's get started. Okay, so how you core a fruit is I like to go from the bottom of it and then you push and you kind of like do that and then watch watch it from the top and then watch it from the top and then push and like you're, you're twisting and pushing at the same time and then you come out the top and then you just pull it back with the quince you got to kind of do this this doesn't happen with the pears let me show you with the pear real quick same thing, come out from the bottom, push and twist until you get to the top, and then your stem will pop out. See, with the pears it does it like this, I don't know why. The quince is harder, but, and then yeah, that's how you, that's how you core a fruit, and then just cut these in half or in quarters when we start cooking it in the Dutch oven. Okay, so for the recipe I was gonna use, it's, since I'm using a ton of the fruit the recipe i'm using is it's it's every, every, every four apples it's three fourths cup water one fourth cup sugar and um, your spices but since i'm doing i'm gonna say i used about close to maybe 16 fruits in total chopped up i'm going to be using two and a quarter cup water three fourth cup sugar a heaping tablespoon of cinnamon, half a uh, tablespoon of ginger and um, ground cloves, and the same amount in uh, salt. I have this Himalayan rock salt. You know, you can use whatever you want. It, it's fine. So once you have everything cored, chopped, um, you have all your ingredients, go ahead and put them inside the Dutch oven. Put it like on a low to medium heat and then just let it cook until and, and please put a lid on it and then let it cook until it the fruit gets really really soft that you can mash it kind of like mashed potatoes and once it gets to that consistency then we'll go ahead and put everything in a blender to blend it Just a quick, um, just a quick thought or whatever while this thing is cooking. Um, I have another video. Earlier on in my channel, I did like a quick little snack with quince, and I kind of mentioned this in the beginning of the video, but um, you know, I'll just say it again. My, and I'm sorry if you hear singing. My husband is recording someone right now, so lots of noise is going on in my house, but it's okay. Um, so anyways, my stepdad's friend has 
like I don't know a orchard mini orchard or just a couple trees I don't know I have not seen his house but every year around this time his fruit his trees start to fruit and my stepdad will bring home to my mom's house like a bunch of quince and pears one year I told him bring me some and the dude brought home a huge cooler of pears and quince I was like oh my god I cannot I, ca I cannot use all this this fruit it's gonna go bad so I tried to give away as much as I could like I would have customers that would buy things and then I'd be like hey would you like some pears and quince um, but yeah he gave me way too many last year so I mean with that little snack thing that I have in the beginning of my channel or earlier on in my channel I mean it was just like a ricotta dip that you so I mean obviously with all those quince that I had got last time I could not finish all those before they spoiled with that one little recipe snack that I shared with you guys so I figured I can do um, an applesauce so I did and I went up I went and looked up a, um, a recipe for applesauce and I did try it once with actual apples and pears and it came out pretty good and then when I started getting the more hey baby go drink your water sweetie then when I started getting more abundant of the quince um, you know I, I don't I don't like to waste things so I was like you know what let me see if I can boil these things like I did with the apples and pears and see if it comes out the same and actually the last time I did this recipe, so I, I kind of do this every, around this time, September, August, I mean, August, September, um, it, it actually worked. Even though they are hard, they are very dense, you know, as the fruit themselves, the quince, but once you boil it and you, you slow, you slow cook it and everything, like with the pears, it gets soft and, you're, and it's that flavor with the pears, it makes an amazing sauce. So I did, I went ahead and I did the... The pears, I substituted the apples with the quince because I was able to do it all for free. And um, it, it worked out. And I, and I, my mom used to make pork chops when I was little. And she would always buy like the applesauce, but it was like the, the ones in the little cups. And it was cold and you'd put on your applesauce. So I was like, this being homemade, fresh, and it was warm apple, well not applesauce, quince pear sauce. I'm sorry, I, I could, I'll probably keep saying applesauce just because it's it's easier and quicker to say but you know what I'm talking about so I put the applesauce on there so I'm like well it'll it'll be fresh and it, and it tastes good on its own like it, it tastes really good on its own and I will say this recipe is more amazing than I think if I would have just done it with applesauce alone something about the, the quince even though like if you eat it as it's by itself you know it's 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 kind of dry it's not juicy the, the, the taste is real subtle but just something about it when you give it sugar and you cook it with something else and the spices it, it brings out something really su surprisingly amazing from it so that's why I, I, I wanted to share this recipe because it, it actually goes amazing with pork chops um, or you know if you don't eat pork you could just eat it by your by itself as like a treat it's awesome um, but of course you don't have to use quince and pears you don't have to just exclusively use apples you can use um like the apple pear i don't know they're not called i don't know what the hell they're called but they're like an apple and a pear mixed i saw them at costco the other day you could use those pears any kind of apple any kind of pear any kind of fruit like that that has the crunch i'm sure there's like one more distant relative of the apple that you could use in there but Anyways, it'll work. I love this recipe. Every time I, when you make it fresh, your house just smells amazing. And it has like that, that fall smell of like the ginger and the allspice and well, if you use allspice and, and the ground cloves and, and the cinnamon, it just smells like fall. And even though where I live, it's I still have about two more months before our summer is over because it's still really hot right now. It's just nice to have that smell in your house. Um, it's just is this a comforting smell so um, we'll leave that um, it's still cooking with, with the amount that I have in my Dutch oven it's probably gonna take about an hour if you could do this while you're at work and just leave it like on the crock in a crock pot all day even better just slow cook it all day the flavors will be even more intense uh, if, but if you do do a small batch like the original recipe like I was saying in the beginning 
a four apples with the other portions of the ingredients, um, you probably could do it within half an hour to 45 minutes. But I think with, with the batch I have, it might take an hour, hour or two to get to that, that softness and, and that way it's all equal. Because you don't want to take it out too early and then the the top's still crunchy but the bottom is nice and soggy. So you, it, it's got to be, and you got to keep stirring it too. But um, I mean, that's what I have to say. It's, I can't wait to have some. All right. Back to work. Okay, so now that everything has been cooked down, so it's been cooking for about an hour and a half, I already checked everything with the fork and I can stab everything pretty easily. So I would recommend you do it this way. Andrew, don't do that. Mm. Uh, doing it this way, like with the spoon, because the Dutch oven is too wide and you're just going to spill fruit all over the place. Pay attention to the fruit. Higher, Andrew. So just throw everything in here. <laughs> and then when it's emptied out, then try and dump the rest of the remaining juice from the Dutch oven into the blender. Follow my hands, Andrew. Follow my hands, Andrew. Uh-oh. Okay, so. Now, I've let it cool. Don't put it in here while it's piping hot. And I'm going to put a little... And then I'm going to plug it in. And let it go. 